Ivan, thank you very much for being here today. You are representing Sura Investments. Uh, can I start by asking you to introduce yourself a bit and explain to us what's your company doing nowadays? Thank you, Gustavo, for having me here. My name is Ivan Zarate. I'm a portfolio director in Sura Investments. Sura Investments is a leading uh, regional asset and wealth manager in Latin America. Uh, we manage around $18 billion between all asset classes and in real assets, we manage around 1.6 billion, which uh, one, uh, in which real estate uh, comprises around $600 million. We are direct investors and we have 12 investment fund, funds under manage. Fantastic. And I know you have uh, um, investments in different countries like Mexico, uh, Colombia, Chile, Peru. Yeah. Uh, what makes these countries uh, attractive? We're very active in the region. Uh, in fact, our, our, our view, long-term view, is to be the, a leading uh, investment manager in real estate. And those are the countries we selected, not only because we have presence with our uh, parent company, Sweet Asset Management, but also because we believe on the fundamentals of these markets. These four markets uh, comprises the Pacific Alliance, which share uh, a lot of uh, relevant uh, characteristics, such a, 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 a good fiscal policy, monetary policy. And besides the political risks, we think there are a, a important and relevant uh, factors uh, to sustain any investment thesis. Uh, the most important one is the demographic bond. Mm. All of these markets are, uh, if you compare those markets with Europe or other developed markets, the major uh, portion of the population has a working age. And that's really important for real estate because that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's something that can sustain the growth of any asset class or, super, or any segment, specifically real estate, because there is a lot of consumption. The other relevant factor is that the region is suballocated in real estate. If you compare the region, uh, for example, with uh, developed countries, you know how much the pension funds invest in real estate, institutional capital is less than half of developed markets. So I think that's a big uh, driver for the region in terms of uh, potential. And the other factor, which is more uh, specific to this cycle, is that, uh, as you know, you know the last three, three, or three years, we have been under a uh, higher interest rates, and that's a global phenomenon that has impacted real estate Absolutely. as a whole. But uh, uh, Latin America and these specific countries, um, I think there are better position now because they are, and this is quite a, a strange, but they are forward in the, in the, in the, in, in the cycle. And they, are, they started uh, reducing the interest rates earlier, earlier. all of them, and we speak this to, to uh, extend to the, to the end of this year. So that's going to be a big driver for the, for the investment. Of course, you have the political, some political noise, okay? uh, a lot of fear, okay, but I think mm -hmm. that's not bad per se, because that fear creates some mm -hmm. identities as well. Absolutely. One of the main asset classes uh, that you have in your portfolio is industrial and warehousing, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Uh, and considering the, what's going on in the region, I would assume that nearshoring uh, uh, element taking place in, in Mexico is probably a big, big, big thing in your uh, uh, decision-making process. How are you going about this, this trend to ensure that you guys make the most of it? Well, nearshoring, as, as you mentioned, is a big uh, investment thesis for, I think, for all the major players in the region. Uh, specifically for us, uh, we, have a, we launched an investment fund in Mexico, which is focused on this specific strategy, but um, is aimed basically to not to develop the, the product, the, the assets, but most, because there, is, there are some development risks there, but we're targeting here is uh, basically uh, acquiring stabilized assets mm -hmm. okay, with a high yield relative to the risk that it's involved. Whereas where you have here are AAA, typically AAA tenants, you know, good rents, sustainable rents, 
very good uh, market um, considerations. There is a, a lot of demands, lower vacancies. So the, the, the yields that we can get with a lower risk in a core or core plus strategy is, is pretty good in mm -hmm. our opinion, because just across the border of the US. So we, we had a fund and a strategy there uh, we didn't uh, develop a, or started a opportunistic or the, a strategy or something to develop because I think that place is already you know, crowded. Okay, and that's not really our expert, our main expertise. And expanding on you on the nursery, I want I want to add that yeah, everyone speaks about nursery in Mexico, no, but people tend to forget because of the size of the market that all, all, also in South America there is something that can. A, a convert or be transforming near shoring, but from China. It was China is mm -hmm. trying to enter to the region. They are developing a big port in Peru, almost a 3.5 billion investment, which is gonna be the gateway for uh, Chinese investments. It's an um, uh, it's a very relevant investment, which is is is, is, is gonna be that port is gonna be uh, launched next year. And if you add that to almost $2 billion invested just 70 miles in the south uh, for Peru, Chile, and Colombia. I think those, that, that's going to be a, another, you know, something, another, uh, another thing to, to, to keep in mind, okay, in order to uh, uh, analyze new uh, opportunities and strategies. Interesting. And uh, how is the ESG topic being treated currently uh, for, for, for Azura? Is it still a big topic for you? Is it now fully integrated with the way you do the, your investments or is less uh, important than you would expect before? I, th I think now, uh, first, first of all, Suda is a, is a signet, signature of, a, or has signed a PRI, Principle for Responsible Investment. Yes. So it's a, a, not only for real estate, but for all the asset classes, it's a very important topic super important okay that that basically uh, uh, set set us a framework for for some for example tenants we can't invest on or or maybe some type of buildings we can invest on we don't view that as um, um as some as a, as a trend i think we, that's it's more structural in our view mm. so based on that we have incorporated in our framework the uh, esg principles uh, that's why around 65% of our portfolio uh, has any, uh, any type of certificate, okay, uh, lead certificate or similar. And we aim to include only assets. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's still, we're it's talking of developing of markets. It's not, it's going to be so straightforward as we would like, but we think that uh, it has to be a, a, a goal for us to include or acquire assets that have any type of certificate. So we are very focused on, on, on ESD principles. Now, final question. Uh, we are here in Madrid having this conversation uh, and we have together with you almost 200 investors, developers, lenders that are looking to capital flow between uh, uh, Latin America and, and Spain, Portugal more specifically. What are your uh, uh, views or what are uh, Zura views, uh, Zura's views on, on this region? Are you uh, actively looking to do something currently? Well, uh, the reason we're here, basically, first, we're exploring the market so on, on general terms. I think uh, what, what happened in, the, in Latin America the last three years, four years, which has been the, uh, the exit of some local funds, local money towards uh, developed markets, uh, is it's a trend that is there, and maybe that's, that can happen in the future again because there is always cycles and there are uh, political risks. So we as uh, wealth managers and asset managers, yet, just not thinking on, on, on being asset managers, or local asset managers, but wealth and asset managers as a whole, we think that's also an opportunity. If we can find uh, good strategies, very good players here, uh, so we can uh, give those strategies, mm -hmm. or we can present those strategies to our base of investors in LATAM. I think if there are good managers and good opportunities, uh, we are more than welcome to analyze them. In fact, we had a very good experience in Latin America um, uh, developing, launching a fund of funds strategy. So we, what we do here is 
uh, we invest on uh, on this. Uh, we have this investment fund. We we invest on global real estate managers. So based on that, you can add several managers. One makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 that's now because now now the situation is that probably most of the of the money wants to exit the radio for any reason. But if you look maybe one year, two years from now, uh, I think the, the, the situation in Latam Cup, the risk perception will be lower. More. The risk then perception will, And then we can see Absolutely. money coming so from it's abroad. it's important to be well positioned in Absolutely. both markets Absolutely. so you can make the most of Absolutely. This, the that's, timing. Absolutely. We need to do that and that's why, why we're here. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Ivan. Okay, thank you very much. Thank so, you.